We're five weeks away from the Breeders' Cup Classic. Trainers have already kind of formulated their game plans, what races they're going to use to prep. It's all a big production. There's one down. Excited about today. It's not like any other job. Hey, Princess. How you doing? There's a lot of anticipation. They're all in line. I'll be climbing the walls, getting extremely anxious. There's no such thing as a lucky box or a lucky TV. Preparation is key. It's a photo finish. It's get the horse to the classic and make sure, if possible, that they run their best race on that day. It's, it's an art. The atmosphere, the horses, the sunrise. You can't even imagine it. It's beautiful. Five o'clock in the morning, all the horses coming out at the same time. It's the best thing in the world. Yeah. Morning, Rosie. Hey. I didn't know you were a movie star. Can I get your autograph? <laughs> Good morning, can I help you? Clocker's Corner is a place where the jockeys, trainers, owners come and get coffee, donuts, breakfast, and they look at the horses. It's a half and half chocolate with coffee. Next guest. Almost all the customers already know what they want, so I get it ready as soon as I see them walking up the steps. Didn't you guys win yesterday? I've been working at this racetrack for 40 years, nine months, and two days. This is Bob Baffert. He was a jockey. Rosie. Yes, Bob. I'm ready for my coffee, honey. All right, you got it. Rosie and I go way back. Yeah. <laughs> my number one fan. Yes. Good luck today. Thank you, babe. Can I help you? I just love this place. It's a big family. Rosie, am I the nicest guy here? The second to the nicest. Bob Baffert came first. <laughs> People don't really realize the care that the horses get between 5 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock. They've got dedicated people that take care of them. All the work's been done by the time we get over there in the paddock. Everything okay, David? That's a bit of his personality. <laughs> don't bother me. He's already trained this morning, and now he's just sanding in some hot water and Epsom salt sort of help his feet out a little bit. Well, they like that. I know you like him, does he like you? I don't think so. <laughs> I've been actively involved in the business since 1971. To develop a horse and get him to the classic and then to have him win kind of keeps me around a little bit. I've never won it. I've been second in a couple times. When Code of Honor won the Travers last month, that was fourth Travers for me. Code of Honor is gaining ground. There's only one other trainer who's won any more. Code of Honor of 21 years since his last Travers win. Does winning the Travers ever get old? No, it doesn't get old. It's too long. If I have won Jockey Club Gold Cup three times, hopefully Saturday will be the fourth also. We got it? Yes, thank you. Takes me a little while to get loosened up here. Welcome back to Santa Anita Park. Every racetrack has its own personality. The barn area, the backside, is one of the most visually stunning places that you'll find. Santa Anita has got a lot of history. I mean, you go back through those barns and some of the greatest horses in the history of horse racing have been stabled here. It's a walk back through time. Hey, guys. Hey, how you doing? What we do before every major race is sort of do our reconnaissance. How you doing, man? Good. How's your arm? Good. Good, yeah. man. Yeah, I got lucky, actually. I wouldn't necessarily call it investigative journalism, but unless you come back here and do your due diligence, so to speak, you won't know what the big stories are. There have been mornings where probably log 10 miles back here and maybe talk to like one person. Is John around? On the track. Of course. Of course he's on the track. Come back here a little later in the morning? Yeah, like about 10 maybe. 
See, this is Murphy's Law of racetrack preparation. Let me see if he's in here first. Hang on. I think he's at the other end. Herding cats, I believe, is the phrase, right? At least it's a beautiful office, right? And we have six horses in the awesome again. There's one heavy favorite, McKenzie, trained by Bob Baffert. Any anxiety being back here, Bob? Not really, you know. One to nine, you know, we want to, you know, want to win, but uh, it's always that last race, that last hurdle, you know, to get him through. But it's a privilege to run at San Diego. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, All right. One of the things about Bob, he has a very keen intuition about his horses. He trains a lot on feel. He's so versatile. He's got tactical speed. Yeah, I, you know he, what? I you think know. Mike's finally got him figured out that he doesn't. He's not one that wants to go out there and be on the on the engine. He can sit, 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 and then he's got gear. One thing we've learned in covering these races over the years is sometimes the horses that look like they're going to be the big guns in the Breeders' Cup Classic, it doesn't always turn out that way. It's going to be interesting the way this race sets up. John's horse showed good speed last time. I've got speed. We didn't overtrain him going into this one because uh, I think the bigger prize is obviously in five weeks. You had to love his race in the Pacific Classic. I was real proud of him. So now the big question is, if you win, what the hell is Brittany going to do? Or... <laughs> She'll be going nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Draft picked and chasing gaily. Higher power in full flight. Higher power and Flavion Brad Winwell. Brad pick second. Well, I'm Brittany Erton. He's Pete Erton. I'm Pete Erton. Daughter, dad. Yeah, and uh, we've we been both together work 32 in horse years. <laughs> Fixing her whole hair so she looks good. She has to look pretty for camera, right? I forgot to tell you, she bites people in the face. Glad that's over. Just take me through coming into the race. We spend a lot of time talking about how the horses are doing or what race they're pointing towards. She's and great how at difficult intel. it's going yes. to come up. For me, I'm already doing this research for work, so. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll take uh, what she has to say with more than a grain of salt, for sure. Plus, it gives me a reason to call her. Oh, Draft came out to say hello. Hi, big boy. How are you doing? It's just really special to see the connection those that work in this industry have with these animals. Those are the stories that I, I really enjoy sharing. The interview that you did uh, for the Pennsylvania Derby. Safi Joseph. I mean, that, that was emotional, that guy. I mean, I felt it. To have a horse like this that could point towards the Breeders' Cup Classic, what does that mean to you? It means everything. Since I was three years old, this, this is my life. And it's come through. Working the race is difficult for me because I'm biased. Last and surely not least is draft pick for my father, Peter Erden. When he was running in the Pacific Classic, for him to run second, well, everybody saw how I felt about that. I'll scream for second and third. Yeah, she will. It's a big deal. Yeah, me and Randy were talking about trying to get you on film tomorrow. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, that we're means. Have a, a, we have a little bit of an advantage being here and being able to train over the track. I don't know why he's a big underdog. I think it's because it's who he's facing the number one rated horse in the classic division. I think there's a whole lot more pressure when you're the favorite, but this horse loves this racetrack. That's what he has over the horses that come in, but Mackenzie, <laughs> he likes it too. <laughs> Can you beat Mackenzie tomorrow, huh? Because huh? if yeah. you beat him, you know you win the race. Mackenzie is a one to nine favorite, and he has two racing legends in his corner, trainer Bob Baffert, and jockey Mike Smith. I'm just watching Midnight Bijou uh, warm up right now. She looks nice and happy. Most of the time I ride her, but you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You're blessed to be in these kind of decisions because you're riding some really good horses, but they're also tough because you can only ride one. Uh, but Mackenzie is, is uh, you know, the big horse running for the Classic in the Breeders' Cup this year, and he, he preps the day. And, and, uh, so we had to stay here to, to ride him, and then, of course, Johnny Velasquez is going to ride her there. It's tough to be a top jockey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Riders up. Midnight Bizu is currently undefeated this year, and she's got 
two races left this year. This one today, the Bell Dame, and then it's the Breeders' Cup. It would be an incredible campaign to be able to finish off as undefeated, especially taking down the Breeders' Cup distaff. So she's going to sail. Are you going to retain anything or? You know, we'll see what happens. We can talk about it. Okay, it's just, but it's, so how do I answer? Like, would we consider running against the boys when we're selling her? And, but so I can answer that. Um, we have Midnight Bizu entered in the Night of the Stars, the Phasic Tipton November sale. Bobby, how you doing, buddy? Hey, good luck. Good to see you. And I try not to think about that right now, just because Midnight Bizu has truly been incredibly life-changing. I mean, she's become part of the family. The first one to come up will be the one to I favorite Midnight Bizu. But you know, look, this is a business. The fact that I was able to acquire Midnight Bizu for a mere $80,000 as a two-year-old, and to think now she's worth millions of dollars, um, you don't have to be a math expert to understand it's a pretty good return on investment. They're all in line. But at this point in time, we're embracing and appreciating all the time we're spending with her to the nth degree, 100%. They're off. In the Bell Dame, Midnight Bizu had a good start from that inside post. You can feel it, right? You felt it without me, without you even knowing the answer, but she's run down inside of there before. To do their run up the back stretch. There goes Midnight Bizu now, and she gets even and takes over the lead with a half mile to go. Spring of the wind is clinging to her, though. She hasn't gone away yet. On the Wildcat makes her move on the outside. These two move away from the others side by side. And the eight Wildcat trying to make a race of it, but Midnight Bizu's edging the way. And Midnight Bizu just kissed Wildcat goodbye. And she goes on to victory and on to the Breeders' Cup. Thank you. Thank you very much. You call it. She didn't have an easy trip. You know what I'm saying? She was in that place where she's, you just feel uncomfortable, right? But she still did it. She's good. When you talk about the Horse of the Year conversation, you must mention the superstar female. That's Midnight Bizu. She was terrific. Really, really good this year. Is there anyone that can give her a run for her money? She's classy. She's tenacious. Elates could give her a run for her money, surely, if she went to the If she runs there. Kim, why don't you and Bella will go from the gate? Okay. Get to the wire, are you okay with that? Yes. All right, good. We've got a very nice horse, top filly named Delay. We've got the option to go in Breeders' Cup Classic. It brings a lot of interest when the best of the girls are running against the best of the boys, and, and sometimes they pull it off. And we've also got Tacitus. On a couple occasions, he's been a bit unlucky, but we're hoping that he'll be able to pull it off in the Jockey Gold Cup. I think that would send him on his way to the Breeders' Cup Classic. If you're lucky enough and good enough to get to the winner's circle, you have to feel like you've done something right. I don't know that it's bragging rights, but it's, it's actually just the fact that, you know, you got the job done. Up next, the thrilling Jockey Club Gold Cup at Belmont Park. It's a playoff atmosphere. It's not win or go home. Instead, it's win and you're in. All right, this is Vino Rosso. Translation? Red wine. I think what I really love about training horses is that the results are very concrete, as opposed to the racing part. Things like the Kentucky Derby and the disqualification there, you know, you get to see on a daily basis if the work you're doing is achieving the results you're looking for. Vino Rosso has been a very, very good, solid, consistent campaigner for us, but the Jockey Club Gold Cup, it's the race that we've uh, unfortunately have not been able to win. We've had some very close seconds, you know, so we would certainly like to check that one off, hopefully uh, soon. Jockey Club Gold Cup has some key Breeders' Cup contenders. It's a field that's even more accomplished than the field in the awesome again from top to bottom. I mean, you've got Code of Honor, who's a very impressive winner of the Travers, along with Tacitus, who he beat in that race. Another fast horse, a good horse, Vino Rosso. 
has been running exceptionally well. And Preservationist just comes off a big win. So the Jockey Club Gold Cup is going to have a lot to say about the Breeders' Cup Classic field. Post time for the Jockey Club Gold Cup. What I'm watching for is uh, what the Code of Honor does, the three-year-old. Gives you an idea of where the older horses are. If you show up and let big day, it doesn't matter. Forget what's happened, it's what's been, how they are that day. They are all in line. There they go. They're off in the Jockey Club. Oh, they're going to on the screen up And Vino Rosso to the early lead. Tacitus has been guided now to the outside by Jose Ortiz, and Preservationist is now coming up on their outside to make it three together after a 24.02 quarter. Code of Honor is up running in fourth right now. He's two lengths off the lead. It is Vino Rosso and Tacitus, and nothing separates these two. Code of Honor now swings up on the outside, Vino and Rosso's Vino Rosso is in front at the top of the stretch. Code of Honor and Vino Rosso come stride for stride into the final 16th. It is Code of Honor on the outside. Vino Rosso, these two will decide a thrilling Jackie Club Gold Cup, and it is very close. It looks like Vino Rosso has edged out Code of Honor on the wire, and then it was Tacitus and Preservationist. Number three, Vino Rosso was first. It's a photo finish in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. The final time was two minutes, 0 .30 seconds. Time. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold all tickets. There is a steward's inquiry into the stretch run of this race. There is also an objection lodged by Code of Honor against Vino Rosso. Inquire objection, there is. I knew it. You got an inquiry. There, there was some there's some bumping going on. Once again, the rider of number two is claimed foul against number three. Alleging interference in the stretch, there is a Stewart inquiry as well. There has been a disqualification in this race. Number three, Vino Rosso from first to second for interference in the stretch with number two, Code of Honor. Returning to the winner's circle is Code of Honor. It's a New York crowd. Breeders' Cup congratulates Shook McGahey and John Velasquez. Both horses ran incredible races, and you hate to see it happen like this, but I'm just really proud of Cold of Honor. You know, I couldn't be any happier. Breeders' Cup win and you're in race. What are those feelings like now? Well, it's always exciting, you know, and we'll see how he comes back. I'll talk to Mr. Perry and make up a ride. Open the diaper, Johnny! Hold on a minute. One more, Johnny. Controversy, objection, frustrating loss in the battle, but not the war moving forward for Vino Rosso. Code of Honor, the Jockey Club Gold Cup winner. Welcome back to Santa Anita Park. The start of the prestigious grade one. Awesome again. McKenzie's trying to follow in the footsteps of Accelerate, who won this race last year, then went on to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. Mike Smith, 26 Breeders' Cup victory, 13 of them right here. Mike, he and Bob Baffert have developed a chemistry and a trust. And it's very unusual in horse racing to have a scenario in which no other rider has ridden McKenzie in a race, only Mike Smith. We all right, my man. Let's see what we do here. Yeah. I want to use this no, race to get ready. Bob said he's starting to put McKenzie up there with some of the other really top horses. Even with that familiarity, Mike has said just in the last four or five races that he's finally figured McKenzie out. All right, guys. Mike knows that horse like the back of his hand. All right, here we go. McKenzie is the most likely winner, and I'm not brave enough to pick against him in a spot like this. Brittany, what about you? Well, everybody knows where my heart would be with my father's horse draft pick, but it is Mackenzie. No chalk there. <laughs> Better hope Dad's not listening. Well, he's watching the horses, so we're good. <laughs> good luck, Brittany. There he is, Mackenzie. But how about draft pick 
What a story that would be. Is there an upset brewing? We're about to find out. McKinsey, one to nine. It is post time for the grade one awesome again stakes. Frank Mirmati with the call. They're off in the awesome again. Higher power stumbled at the start. McKinsey comes out beautifully and takes the lead. Mongolian Groom is up close in the early going. Just behind them, it's draft pick in fourth, then seeking the soul. Higher power in between horses, only about two lengths off the pace. You cannot get any more compact than this. McKinsey three wide. Mongolian Groom is still in front, though and Isotherm second. Mongolian Groom running a good race. He's in cruise control thus far. McKinsey gets his cue and comes after him, trying to call her. Draft pick is down at the rail. McKinsey right up to Mongolian Groom at the top of the stretch. Mongolian Groom digging in very gamely. McKinsey is a half length behind him, and Mongolian Groom kicks off slightly inside the final eighth of a mile. McKinsey is all out, but today belongs to Mongolian Groom. Wire to wire in the offside awesome again. Sadio. McKenzie settles for second. Higher power third, seeking the soul with fourth. Is there an upset brewing? You bet there is. Mongolian Groom turns back the challenge of McKenzie. McKenzie looked like he was primed and ready to go at the top of the stretch, but Mongolian Groom, he ran the race of his life. You know, I've known and been around Bob since he very first got into the training business. Nobody knew who Bob Baffert was, but now, it's almost like, what do you give a guy who has everything, right? He swept the Triple Crown twice. He's got American Pharaoh on his resume. But one of the things that you notice about Bob and being around him is that he wants something that's even better. Every year in horse racing, there's always a discussion about legacy, about how a certain horse stacks up with the all-time greats. And the great thing about the sport is that we think we know, but the reality is it's much easier said than done.